Standing as tall as a two-story building, weighing as much as 10 to 14 African elephants, and as long as four school buses, the Argentinosaurus is perhaps one of the largest creatures to ever walk the Earth. Despite its massive size, it's easy to assume that the Argentinosaurus sat comfortably at the top of the food chain with little to no competition. However, nature always has a way of shaking things up, and even the Argentinosaurus had predators of its own. So what was the Argentinosaurus like? How big were they? And how did one of the largest creatures to ever walk the Earth become prey for a dinosaur no bigger than a crocodile? With a height of about 35 feet or 10 and a half meters at the shoulders, Argentinosaurus was a massive sauropod that lived during the late Cretaceous period in what is now South America, primarily the region of present-day Argentina. Walking the Earth between 99.6 and 89.8 .8 million years ago, the Argentinosaurus could reach lengths of up to 100 feet or 30 meters and weigh between 70 and 100 tons. As sauropods, these colossal beasts were herbivores known for their exceptionally long necks that helped to reach high foliage, extremely massive bodies, and an equally long tail that served as a counterbalance to their massive bodies. Their robust frame was supported by four pillar-like elephantine legs with broad feet that helped distribute their enormous weight. Living in Argentina during the late Cretaceous period, the Argentinosaurus lived in a lush, humid environment filled with abundant vegetation that supported its enormous dietary needs. They lived in dense forests and open plains and used their size to browse tall trees and shrubs for ferns, conifers, and other vegetation. And although these gentle giants seemed to live in paradise, not everything was as it seemed. See, although they stood taller than your average suburban home, these massive creatures were still hunted by other carnivorous animals. To understand how, you need to look no further than their anatomy. See, to grow as massive as this and to thrive for as long as the Argentinosaurus did, a species would need two things. One, be well adapted to its region and environment, and two, reproduce a lot. When it came to adaptation, the Argentinosaurus had that criterion on lock, as their long necks, massive bodies, long tails, and strong feet provided all the support they needed to survive in late Cretaceous Argentina. Their vertebrae were even filled with air sacs to maximize their size and minimize their weight. The Argentinosaurus's problem with nature came from the second criterion, reproduction. See, as reptiles, the Argentinosaurus laid eggs, and not just a few, but tens of thousands of them. In fact, according to evidence found in Patagonia, a region in South America, specifically in Argentina and Chile, fossils of Argentinosaurus and other dinosaurs have been discovered. The Argentinosaurus laid tens of thousands of eggs in large groups, similar to how modern reptiles do it, and has done so in the same region for tens of thousands of years. Ideally, this would have been amazing for the species, as there are enough offspring to carry on their legacy. But in a weird twist, the reproduction method is the reason why they fell victim to predators. From the moment they hatch, the young Argentinosaurus immediately has to start fending for themselves. In fact, fossil evidence from Patagonia even shows that they hatch with their teeth already formed and ready to eat. This is quite important because, although they hatch from ostrich-sized eggs, the Argentinosaurus offspring are really small compared to the animals of that time period. In fact, in 2016, Mark Hallett and Matthew Weedle stated that the eggs of the Argentinosaurus were probably only one liter in volume and that a hatched Argentinosaurus's size was no longer than 1 meter or 3.3 feet and not heavier than 5 kilograms or 11 pounds. Essentially, the baby Argentinosaurus was roughly the same size as some common house cats. This obviously makes no sense, as these tiny creatures grow up to be taller than anything we've seen today. In fact, scientists estimated that in order to grow to the average size of an Argentinosaurus, the offspring would need to grow at a rate of 40 kilograms per day to weigh 75,000 kilograms at 40 years old. But 40 years is a long time, and sadly, many Argentinosauruses would never make it to this age, all thanks to their predators. Perhaps one of the most infamous and unexpected predators of the Argentinosaurus is the Scorpivenator bustingori. Standing at approximately 21 feet by 6.5 meters and weighing around 1.5 tons, this medium-sized theropod was renowned for its speed and agility and was an extremely formidable predator. Although they stood out against other herbivores in the grand scheme of things, their size and strength were not sufficient to directly prey on the mighty adult Argentinosaurus. So instead, the Scorpivenator did something different and focused its predatory efforts on smaller and more manageable prey within its size range. This adaptation was a nightmare for the Argentinosaurus. 
The Scorpio Venator had an agile and robust build and was equipped with sharp teeth and powerful jaws, which it used to ambush and chase down newly hatched Argentinosauruses at their nesting grounds. But they weren't the only ones doing this, as other formidable predators like Giganotosaurus and Maposaurus, both massive theropod dinosaurs measuring around 40 to 43 feet in length, were also in on the action. These carnivores, with their powerful jaws and serrated teeth, were well equipped for hunting large prey and were also known to hunt in packs. So, factoring in their size, agility, and the fact that they hunt in packs, it's easy to see how much of a terror these creatures were to the newly hatched or weakened Argentinosaurus. Essentially, whenever an Argentinosaurus was weakened or newly hatched, it faced an all-out buffet of potential predators, making survival a dangerous struggle. Besides the earlier mentioned candidates, another notorious predator to the Argentinosaurus were Abelosaurus theropods, such as Carnotaurus and Rugops. Although smaller than the large Giganotosaurus and Maposaurus, these dinosaurs, which stood at about 10 and 6 feet and weighed about 1,500 pounds and 900 pounds respectively, were still formidable predators in their own right. Armed with their robust builds and predatory adaptations like speed, sharp teeth, and powerful jaws, these dinosaurs targeted smaller prey and could have opportunistically preyed upon young or sick sauropods like the Argentinosaurus. So how did the Argentinosaurus fight back? Well, in short, they didn't. They weren't adapted to fight, but they did have some adaptations that helped. Essentially, the key to their survival was their enormous size, which acted as a formidable deterrent to most predators. But that wasn't all, as living in herds also provided additional protection through numbers, making it challenging for predators to isolate individuals. Unbelievably massive, gentle, and designed to survive, the Argentinosaurus was truly one of the marvels of the prehistoric world and an actual feat of nature. In the end, it was not the big, scary dinosaurs that killed off the Argentinosaurus, but rather a catastrophic asteroid impact and subsequent environmental upheaval during the cretaceous paleogene extinction event. But what do you think about the Argentinosaurus? Would you like to see one in person? And do you think a baby Argentinosaurus would be cute? If you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Have any thoughts or questions? Leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep exploring and stay curious.